What up, what up, what up, what up? What up, YouTube? What up, ATP? Uh, it's your boy, Rain. This is uh, with my co-host, of course, Ray Davis. Uh, we tapping in right quick. Shout out to um, all the subscribers and anybody, you know, supporting the channel. We're going to tap in every now and then. Um, as you guys can see, the segment of the show is called H At This Point, right? Which is, you know, what ATP stands for. And just kind of addressing things more on a, you know, right now type of situation at this point things may change but i definitely wanted to tap in on this topic as far as the shakur stevenson and tank davis situation is is going especially with the fans and the way the fans are approaching the whole entire situation it, it seems like it's getting out of hand um from the outside looking in ray davis first of all how you doing today brother i'm good clay how you doing how was how was work today bro man working too hard man you know what i mean tired really trying to you know, I'm like, I got to hit this up. You, you you hit me up earlier today and then you said, do you see these things going on out here? Go ahead. You tell me what, what, yeah, what, what, so, where you come you know, from. I'm listening. I'm listening to the streets. You know what I mean? I'm always out there. You know what I mean? Building, mm -hmm. watching Twitter, watching YouTube. Um, and some chats here and there, talking to some um, some people that uh, we have connections with. And then it's just like, yo, it's just the biggest news of the day besides Besides the other side of the street over there, we're talking about Shakur, mm. Jersey Zone, Shakur Stevenson, and mm. Baltimore, Mallet, Tank Davis, you know what I mean? The great eight out mm. there, you know what I mean? They got this this beef that's settling through the fanhood, and the fans are mad because Shakur, sta uh, his team stated, fight ain't happening right now. Shakur put out there, he might be fighting somebody else, and um, the, fans are, the fans are in the uproar. I mean, I'm hearing it left and right. I'm hearing Shakur's ducking. Is Shakur ducking? Shakur didn't sign the contract. But my question to you is, when did the contract ever get sent? Well, I think I think that's what this is all about, right? The impatience. You know, I can remember a year ago, uh, about a year, year or two ago. You know, the big thing on on in this space was um, stop saying Tank's name, right? You guys are just trying to clout chase. You're just trying to blow up off Tank's name. These are fighters who are legitimately trying to fight Tank, but the space felt like this was the biggest clout chase in the world for for them to be looking to fight Tank. Tank seemed kind of annoyed, uh, a little frustrated with the situation. Even his team would say, hey, you know, give us 365 days without seeing saying Tank's name. Me personally, I. I'm not used to that, right? In boxing, I thought fighting words were fighting words. And what better place to have fighting words than when trying to build up a fight? I don't know. But at some point, it's changed and people are cloud chasing. So let's be honest, guys. At this point, Turkey Alashik's come into the game. Shakur Stevenson's come at the end of his contract with top rank. He's no longer tied up with that situation. He's a free agent. He has a lot of opportunities on the table now. Maybe opportunities he didn't have last year around this time. He has those opportunities now. Now, Devin Haight is no longer on the, uh, on the plate. He's on the hiatus. We don't know what weight class he's coming back at. He was the one who was chasing the fight with Tank for the most part, and everybody was just... You know, nobody liked the way he was doing his approach, him and his father's approach to making it happen. Uh, Shakur pretty much stayed silent, but for the most part, just always acknowledged and understood that, you know, we're at 135. I'm a WBC champion. You're a WBA champion. We're all interested at some point in doing some unifications. We're going to fight inevitably, but always acknowledging Tank Davis's position as an A-side in the conversation. Now, the fan base, Tank's fan base, was always very quick to communicate to everybody that, you know, especially like the Leonard Ellabies and people people like that would always quick to jump and let it be known that, listen, you don't send us any offers. We're the only ones who send offers. You are in a position. Give us any offers. When we're ready for you, we'll send out. Shakur said salute to that. Say less, gang. We can just move on that. When you get, when you send that, that, that contract in the mail, we'll deal with it accordingly at that point. So now let's fast forward to present time where Tank Davis has made a return from a hiatus that he took dealing with legal issues and things of that nature, but he got everything ironed out. You know, now he's back in the space. He had a great comeback fight against Frank Martin, performed well, but more importantly, made an interesting statement, he made real profound statements about his um, future in boxing and how it was going to look. He had a he had a uh, a, a, a to-do list of fighters that he wanted to get at. As he said, we're going to get at ninjas. And the understanding was these guys should all be on, um, you know, keep keep a look on your mailbox, keep a look in your emails, because eventually you're going to get the call and you better take the offer when it comes. I mean, look, boss moves, right? He's a face of boxing. He's moving the way 
he can move and Robbie should move and he, if, if anybody else was in his position probably would move the same way but now at the same time Shakur Stevenson is moving to through his career aiming at being more active looking at getting with a promoter who's going to promote him and give him some better matchmaking you know he's ready to get his career going and start building up his market value well now the space wants it seems as if now that um Lomachenko and Tank Davis, who were supposed to fight, isn't happening anymore. The pressure's flipped over onto Shakur Stevenson's side of the street, which it doesn't look like Shakur is really bothered by the pressure, but at the same time, sticking to the code of, I'm waiting on the contract. Whenever you guys send us the contract, we'll respond accordingly. But until we do that, he has to move with business as usual. So he's entertaining fights with the Williams Zapatas. He's entering fights now that uh, Eddie Hearn seems to be on board with helping Shakur out. Joe, um, Joe Cordina is, is, is part of the um, conversation. Um, and the the fans of Tank are taking this as Shakur should sit still. Shakur should not be looking to make anything else happen. And he should be waiting on his contract and not be thinking about making one other move because he's been asking for this fight. More importantly, I think that what the people want to say is the fans have been asking for this fight this whole entire time. And I dare Shakur even think about moving on and doing anything else. When Tank is ready, he needs to be ready. I don't know if I agree with that. And clearly Shakur's team doesn't agree with that uh clearly they feel like there's other options out there you have turkey alashik who's made it clear that he has his interest vested in shakur's success and him getting fights with um fights for shakur um so that's what shakur stevenson's doing now you're hearing on all these different co content creation spaces that um Shakur is supposed to be waiting on his offer and that Tank and his team have already said they're sending out the offer and Shakur is basically sitting there with his hands out like what offer? I haven't gotten the offer yet. So from my understanding, Team Shakur has not yet received an offer. My right. question to the space in the whole boxing space is one thing. Whose responsibility is it to put this offer out there and where does the pressure really lie? Does the pressure lie on Shakur Stevenson to exhaust all means to make this fight happen? Or is this his Tank Davis's responsibility as the a side as a person who controls everything that goes on with the fights nobody can dictate what happens with tank whose responsible responsibility is it to get this fight coordinated well wow. what do you that's, think that, that's a great question um on my end i believe that um if i'm not mistaken they always say why didn't turkey submit an offer why didn't Devin submit an offer why didn't this person submit an offer so in this case, Shakur saying he's waiting for the contract. He's waiting for the offer. There's no offer made. You know, they're going by what what a manager manager said about something happening in two years, and then mistakenly accepting that as uh, as an offer or some type of contract negotiation. They're accepting what Coach Kenny said, who's already mentioned that he likes to joke around, play around with the Loma disappearing act. You know what I mean? back when Shakur fought, uh, right before Shakur fought, and oh, Shakur, you're next. And then, no, oh, I'm just kidding. Now, I heard Coach Calvin and Coach Kenny say something totally different. But the fans are thinking something different. It's like nothing's matching up. And from what I understand, Tank put out a tweet probably about nine months ago and said, I ain't say it. I'm tired of people speaking for me. I speak for myself. And I don't think anybody that follows Tank took that seriously. Yes, Tank also followed that up with, because I don't want no confusion. You know what I mean? I don't make the fights my team does. So I heard both. But at the same time, his team said, we're looking for a big, bigger fight. We're looking for a bigger, larger payday. Then we're coming for Shakur. So you be ready. You don't bring that into the table for us. That's what I last remember hearing from his team. So as far as why is this a problem, or why is this the situation that we're going in right now is because the fan base of Tank Davis are so submersed in wanting to see Tank fight somebody that's elite, right? Because they're tired, and I get it, they're tired of hearing Tank ain't fight nobody. Tank can't beat this guy. Tank can't beat that guy. My guy's better than Tank. They're tired of hearing that. So they want to prove it, right? They want to, they want to prove it. Not Tank wants to prove it. They want to prove it. So they're living, it's like a dad who takes his son and puts him on the team and says, in my glory days, I did this, son. Guess what? You're going further than me. So he's living through his kid. And he's pushing his kid through everything and, and more. You know what I mean? So it's like the same thing. It's like they're throwing Tank's name out there to push him to do stuff for them. Like, these are the, like oh, yeah, I, I couldn't beat that guy. So you got to do it, Tank. It's crazy, bro. And at the same time, this is the space we're in, Clay. 
listen i mean i agree with what you're saying but i i want to break it down even in a more let's get more specific to what this is all about in my opinion boxing fans today and you know a lot of boxing fans today are fans of a boxer you're going to hear it a hundred times over but it gets kind of weird because what ends up happening especially with a fighter like tank davis it seems as if tank gets in his own world when he's not training for a fight or listen when he's just when he's not promoting an actual fight he's pretty silent he's not really moving around doing too much saying too much he might tweet every now and then to respond to something stupid somebody says about him but for the most part he's quiet now you have a lot of content creation spaces who are basing the the lion's share of their content off of tank davis well it becomes difficult right to to create content on somebody who doesn't give you a lot of content right he's not really into the interviews he's not out there doing too much even in the twitter space he's very limited and controlled with what he's saying a man of few words and shout out to tank davis you know what i mean um that's that's respectable in multiple levels but it seems like the the content creation space will in in the spirit of continuing to make content because they enjoy the response they're getting from all the tank davis fans they're able to attract to their um to their platforms that they're constantly looking to reach and figure out a way to make something interesting and palatable and something tangible for the for the fan base to grab onto so they start to do something kind of weird which is they start to speak for tank regularly right they start to put out messages and they'll get one little word and they'll turn that one little word into a, a contract was sent out or tank doesn't want to fight somebody because they weigh too much or tank doesn't need to do that and tank going to do this and what i've noticed in just being in the background watching this stuff happening is very rarely are they right right very rarely is is very rarely are the thoughts that tank seems to be thinking and how he plans on moving align with the fan base he's usually doing his own thing even with his own coaches he'll do something completely different from what they might be saying was, was getting ready to come right because tank makes his own decisions um boxing is such a broad space ray so many things are going on in boxing and you'd figure if tank is not fighting if he's not doing anything right now if he's just on his vacation in paris or working on trying to figure out who he's fighting next you think they'd cover all the plethora of other things that's going on in boxing right you think they'd look at the christian and billy fight um this weekend or abdullah mason who's about to perform this weekend or the terence crawford a uh, magimal situation uh two weeks ago or the virgil ortiz and baja um Chuk, uh situation that passed the weekend past or even the olympics or i mean the, so many different things they could be covering right now i mean 154 the 154 pound weight class division is a is a content creator's dream come true constantly active now so many different things going on there but it seems like a lot of these guys just aren't watching boxing anymore or they're just not interested in boxing enough anymore right that they're caught up on feeding the machine and the machine being the fans of tank davis and keeping them intrigued and keeping them involved in their um spaces for super chats or for subscribers or whatever they're trying to do um it is weird for the most part a person like myself i don't really have any interest in in this conversation that we're having even right now to be honest with you you know that Ray. right i don't you know because for me until a contract's actually been sent and the fight's been actually put together i don't see what we're talking about but right. but in in the spirit of covering what seems to be current in the space is a lot of people going back and forth as to what's going on between Shakur Stevenson and um, Tank Davis. And from what I can tell, nothing's going on between Shakur Stevenson and Tank Davis right now. I don't even see Tank Davis trying to coordinate a fight with Shakur right now. It looks like him and his team are, are going in a complete different direction right now. Because if they wanted to fight Shakur, they would have been put the, put the um, feelers out there, been sent the offer, been had the conversations about the interest in the fight, and Shakur would have been um, on call right now ready to fight tank davis the mere fact that shakur steven is out here looking for a fight with um a a a joe cordino or a um uh william zapata or any any of those kind of fights that he's trying to make right now let you know he has no contract or no fight that he's entertaining with tank davis you know what i'm saying um tank davis has said nothing that i can tell on social media to refer to him getting ready to fight shakur or anybody else 
It's just rumors, just constant rumors. Maybe it's De Los Santos, maybe it's Raul Venezuela, maybe it's Isak Cruz again, maybe it is still Shakur, maybe it's Lomachenko, maybe they're working on getting him back together, maybe Lomachenko's getting back in the picture. We don't know what's going on, right? right. So what are we talking about? At the end of the day, he say, she say, hearsay. Nobody oh. has their finger on the pulse of what's going on. These guys are spinning their wheels and it's going nowhere. Exactly, exactly. And I think we try to bring um, to, to, the, to the space so many times that, you know what I mean? We we try to bring boxing from where, where it need from the dark to the front for like, and try to, it's being overshadowed by boxers. Mm. And because of this, this this situation, we're starting to see a really bad angle taken on this boxing space. And then you got people, um, and, I, and I'm not going to be disrespectful today. You know what I mean? I know I always make jokes and, and got nicknames for stuff, but mm-hmm. we really have people um, mis- misleading the masses of boxing, whether they be casual fans or new fans or fans that just like their favorite fighter, instead of just building up boxing. Let's build up the sport and stop worrying about the, the, the single fighter. If Tank decides to put a contract, then we should talk about that then. We just had a weigh-in today. I ain't hear nobody talk about the weigh-in. I'm literally listening to everything. I heard nobody talk about the fight coming up this weekend because it's not of interest. So who was that guy? Who was this? You know who that guy is? That's a guy that's a potential uh, fight for Canelo Alvarez. You guys always say he ain't fighting nobody. And he's getting in the picture. So we're not even paying attention to that. You know what I mean? We, we're just sitting here twiddling our fingers and waiting for the next thing that Devin Haney does, which we talked about. I heard on the media today for a short stint. We're talking about what Shakur is ducking tank. He won't sign the contract. Got Shakur responding to these are all lies. And, and it's just becoming like a, a, a circus, a media circus of things that are not to be taken seriously at the moment. Um, yeah, it's okay to have those those little episodes here and there and talk about it, you know, in the space, but to hear it every single day, Clay, and now to the point where Shakur stated that he was not getting a contract through his um through, in his last interview, and then oh well his his coach said they ain't fighting him for another two years. They wanted to marinate. I mean his manager, excuse me, his manager. Right? So what? That's his manager speaking, right? Y'all say tank can Tank, tank manager speaks all the time. Leonard, Leonard uh, Ellaby speaks all the time. Tank don't say nothing, but when Shakur speaks, we don't listen. When Tank speaks, we don't listen. So when are we listening to the fighters? When are we listening to the people that really are driving the points home and telling us what their interests are? I'm hearing people say, well, Ryan went on and, and made the deal with Al Heyman himself. Guess what, y'all? Al Heyman ain't got nothing to do with this. From la- last I know, Tank is with Tom Brown. Tank is with Amazon. You got that deal with them. If Al's still his advisor, okay, maybe he does. But as far as I know, this don't look like it's a fight that's happening next. I think they're still in the mix with some of the fighters over at the PBC. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to bring someone up to fight Tank, like they did with Hector Garcia. Because there's no one there at the PBC but, like, three fighters that he could fight. And Ryo doesn't, he just fought, so I doubt he's going to fight in October, November. You know? And then you have... Who else? De Los Santos has been sitting on ice for a while. Something that, you know, we usually see over there in that in that promotional company, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to diss them, but that's what we see. A lot of guys just sitting. So if De Los Santos can get in the mix, that'd be great. But is he? You know what I mean? Who else is left there? Now you have to cross the street. Are you going to pay these guys? Are you going to do a deal with them? Are you going to fight on their network? Now we're talking a whole bunch of different things. Because with Canelo... There's nobody there for them, right? So what they've been doing? They've been making deals with with all the zone uh, companies, at Room, De La Hoya, and doing co promotions. Why? Because they can't afford to pay the fighters on their on the side. So at the end of the day, let's see what's happening on on on, on behind the scenes. Because Tank ain't saying nothing. He said something's coming soon. I believe he's going to let us know. And maybe he is doing a deal with Shakur. Maybe they don't want to let the cat out the bag. But that's not for us to do. Yes, we want to see the fight. But why are we pushing the narratives of Jacor Duffy? That's all I got to say. Yeah, um, fans being fans, you know, um, and they want, but they, but a lot of these fans want to be taken seriously in the space. They want the credibility of being um, um, pugilists or pundits in the game that really follow boxing. But it just seems like all you guys do is follow Tank um, or follow Devin into a park when he's getting into a fight um, in the park. You know what I'm saying? Um, who cares? I mean, look. I don't even want to get on that. 
But you, we can. You guys care clearly. Like I mean, I'm not gonna. You guys care, and I mean, your feelings count too, right? What you care about counts too. Uh, you want to count their pockets. You want to know if they're arguing with their women. You want to know if they're beating up fans in the in the um in the amusement park. You want to um you know you want to figure out how many seats are getting sold in their in their events or how many pay per view um, buys are going in. Um, look, obviously, well, you're welcome to it, you know, but the boxing space doesn't benefit from all that nonsense. The boxing space benefits from you guys covering boxing. So shout out to Christian and Billy this weekend, who's going to be having his fight this weekend um, with Dervinchenko. Der- Der- and let's see who wins out of that, because the winner out of that may be well in the in the race of fighting against Canelo Alvarez, possibly, right? Or the winner between Canelo Alvarez and Edgar Belenga. Uh, let's shout out to uh, Monster Inouye, who has a fight coming up um, in, in, in a few days as well. You know what I mean? As well, you know? Let's shout out Abdullah Mason, the up-and-coming prospect who's going to be fighting for his sixth time this year on the calendar year this weekend let's see what how he looks and hopefully you know eddie can push him forward into a contender status and we can see him against a top uh 10 guy soon rather than later you know what i mean uh let's look at all these fights coming up um we have anthony joshua who's about to be um fighting daniel dubois let's look forward to seeing that card let's look forward to seeing better be even bill will finally unify and we get an undisputed light heavyweight champion let's talk about boxing um, you know, and let's promote boxing. Let's push boxing. Shout out to Tank Davis. Can't wait to find out who you fight next, brother. Uh, when that information comes out, you know, we're going to cover it for sure. Shout out to Shakur Stevenson. Can't wait to hear the information on your next fight. Can't wait to see what what what, what big opportunities out there for you. I'm hearing rumors of you possibly being in, in Riyadh or, or in the UK or right back in Newark, New Jersey. You know what I'm saying? Headlining you on the card again. Who knows? You know what I mean? Uh, hope everything works out for all these guys and can't wait to see all these guys fight. But until then, what are we talking about? Exactly. You know? Exactly. And then on the closeout, Clay, I mean, it goes as far as just beating up the boxers that, that are not the fans of the sport. Um, I know we're talking about these two guys, but even uh, I just want to give a big shout out to uh, the numbers that came in for, for Bud Crawford. Um, mm. Great numbers, you know what I mean? Um, so people are in doubt of that. But the numbers are real. The number it did happen. You know what I mean? So I I, I really want to give Bud a really good a round of applause for him not being a person that can sell. Um and it was a good fight. And look, he didn't do it by himself. I'm not gonna give him all the credit. There was a bunch of boxes on that card, a lot of uh headlines on the card. You know what I mean? So he didn't do it by himself. So I'm not gonna give him hundred percent. But I can tell you what, by the time that, that concert kicked off, that place was rocking. And that, that place had a, a, a full capacity from what I can see on the screen. So, you know, people can say what they want and they can have their opinions on it. Rather, it be what it is. And I'm not taking shots at nobody in the, in the YouTube space. I'm just saying generally, because it's not just YouTube. It's not just Twitter. It's just people in general, fans of men. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm saying like, you know, we just want to discredit people because we're fans of another person. Listen, they're all boxers. Let's give them all the same respect and let's give them what they got, bro. If if the shoe fits, wear it, man. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, true. um, you know, you know who you are, you know what you stand for, you know what I'm saying? Um, I can remember uh around this time last year, you know, being berated for um giving options for Devin Haney and Tank Davis for them to make a fight, right? offers that were like interests that could be turned into offers um offers that weren't being entertained because people weren't answering the phone and things of that nature and you know i was i was berated right interest is in an offer an offer is a contract uh, um uh, uh interest shows up as a contract all these different things right basically you know no no speculation no speculating you know what i mean stick to the facts facts over your feelings all kind of nonsense that you hear in this space but when then you hear the conversations today where 99 percent of the crap coming out of you guys' mouth is speculation and interest right no actual contract has hit anybody's hands nobody's rejected an offer nobody's accepted an offer nothing has happened um I have no issues with with the fans. You know what I mean? If you guys are fans, be fans. But please stop trying to sell us this unbiased, just calling it how you see it nonsense. You're stuck. You're fans of a of a man. You're fans of a man. Um, you want to see him? You know, he's your hero. I understand. Look, you know what I mean? Things happen. 
when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? Superman was one of my favorite characters, you know what I'm saying? I watched WWF wrestling. I, you know, I was a big Ultimate Warrior fan, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, I understand what it is to be a fan, you know what I mean? Even though my fandom was something I did more so as a child, but I can relate, you know, right? There's some, some point in my life where I can relate to what you grown men are doing out here, right? But but at the end of the day, don't don't try to don't try to ha have yourself be credible in the space when you when you act like that. Right. Shout out to showbiz when you guys acting moist, moist out here. You know what I'm saying? All fanned out, all fanned out and wanting, and wanting to put the blame on somebody for something. Look, man, if you want to see Shakur Stevenson fight Tank Davis, you know his DM, you know his Twitter. Shout him out. Ask him where the contract is. Tell him you, you guys want that fight next. You you need that contract. That's who you should focus the energy on because what you guys don't want to acknowledge is that it's the A side and all the privileges and perks that it comes with. It also comes with some accountability. It comes with some accountability, right? Somebody on that side of the uh, of the conversation is supposed to be controlling this contract situation and how these fights are getting put together. This is not yeah. Shakur's issue. It's not Loma's issue. Loma already walked away from it and showed you, listen, I'm not interested in doing it. Now. I'm going to do what I feel like doing it. That be that being said, who are you guys getting ready to fight next? Who is Tank fighting next? Only Tank can tell you that. Nobody else. Right. And can I just state too? Maybe this makes a lot more sense too. With with different money in the pot for for these other fighters or potential opponents that maybe even potentially on the list of Tank Davis of his seven fights or six fights that he has, is it very possible that they're no longer being forced because they don't have to chase that bag with him? Like, yeah, they know it's a money fight, but. Is it really a money fight now? You know what I mean? Is it for legacy now? Because I heard Tank say he's going for Undisputed. I know he said that out of his own mouth. And to me, Undisputed has prices to pay. There's different costs to be the boss. And to chase someone that's always uh, gotten a bag for fighting and people fought him and got decent purses or received different uh, bags, you know what I mean? Not at the same caliber uh, in stature. Isn't it safe to say that these guys like, yo, I can make that fight in this guy over here. I don't have to fight him. I don't necessarily know if that's what it is, um, Ray. I'll be honest with you. I think what it comes down to is you guys have made the faces of boxing who they are. Canelo Alvarez, Tank Davis are the faces of boxing. Whenever somebody chases them down and calls them out and tries to make it a situation, you know, they get berated. After a while, you just get tired of that. You get tired of being berated. And you just, listen, you, you become more patient. You know, in my in my industry, what I do, we have a saying, you learn to hurry up and wait. You know, um, the fans of Tank need to learn learn the same thing. Hurry up and wait. Wait just the same way that Shakur has to wait, the same way Loma has to wait, the same way anybody on that list of Tank Davis has to wait. You guys need to learn how to wait. Okay? I know it's difficult. You guys get, get antsy and, you know, you can't sit still. That ADD starts kicking in and you start wanting to say something. I get it. You get bored and you want to say something. I mean, I get it. Well, say something about boxing. There's a lot of boxing going on. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, you know, I know you, you want to say something. I get it. You want to say something. And any you want to say something. I get it, right? But learn to wait. The same way Shakur and all those guys are waiting. That's all they're doing. They they waiting because that's what they've been instructed by you guys, by Tank's um team. They've all been instructed to learn how to wait. Stop calling this man out stop saying this man's name well it's quiet out here nobody's saying this man's name except for tanks fans which i guess that's your job say his name a hundred times but putting the pressure on shakur like shakur has some some say in this more than he actually does it's kind of humorous at this point it's kind of funny to watch you guys just change your whole entire um my uh what's the word i'm looking for your whole entire uh um promotion no man Induction. what's the word describe what they live by um starts oh, with geez. an M. I can't think of it. I'm tired. Machismo? I'm sorry, guys. Macho. Oh, no, I'm in cheese. No, I got it. I'm trying mantra. To oh. That you change your whole mantra, mantra. on how, how how these things work. You know what I'm saying? Now the new mantra is to course Stevenson, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Hurry up and get this contract put together. Hurry up and, and call them out. If you want to keep calling them out, tell them that you want him and over. You guys want a lot. You know what I'm saying? It goes from, from, from cloud chasing to, to now is the time for him. To, I don't know. You know what I mean? Shout out to you. Funny. And I know you touched on this earlier. But wasn't there somebody else doing the same thing about a year to two years ago? 
that was in a division and a division slightly ahead, and they were telling them, leave him alone, you're doing too much. Oh, Wait Devin? for your contract. Yeah. Wasn't that happening yeah, to him? Yeah. So why has it changed for Shakur? And then when he moved on, they said, why did he move on? He doesn't want to fight. He's ducking. Right. It is what it is, right? He's the most so, hated boxer in boxing. Listen, at the end of the day, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You know what I mean? And, and, and what I'm noticing more and more is that the fans are turning these fighters more and more numb to the game. They're less... You, you, th these fighters have gone deaf when it comes to these fans. They don't. They've learned to not listen to these fans anymore. They no. They no longer consider what you guys want anymore. They don't. You guys have numbed them to the point where they're just gonna do. And I. I don't even knock them. When you hear Terrence talking, you hear Shakur talking. Even Andre Ward, who's who's uh, retired now, he's he's co-signing all this. Like, listen, do what you got to do for you, bro. Don't listen to these people. They no. You guys no longer hold weight because you guys are unbiased i'm excuse me you guys are super biased and you guys will make things up and go into stupid dumb conspiracies in 2.3 seconds and expect people to take you seriously right. it is what it Crazy. is <laughs> make it up. i mean make come it on man contracts. contracts that yeah you know what i mean Con negotiations now contracts start off with conversation i guess Yo. You know what I mean? I was saying this like a year ago. Like, you know what I mean? I felt you. I feel you on that. But a year ago, that's not the way contracts were made. That's not the way offers were made. It had to be a piece of paper, right? Right. It had to be a contract. And the A side is the one who does it. And the B side, you know, you guys can go back in your archives. You know the videos you guys are dropping. You know how that goes. So mm -hmm. today, you know, the smallest violin, all these sob stories I hear all over the space right now about how things be, how things are supposed to be really okay that's new to me but we'll be watching christian and billy tomorrow night abdullah mason tomorrow night you know look out for um jahi tucker tomorrow night uh look out for magmadov the uh russian mike tyson um uh, tomorrow night you know yeah and i only we got one more that. thing before we head out mm -hmm. but for all the, for all the uh, fans out there lucy you got something explaining to do uh yeah you know you know how it is but guys, uh, like, comment, and you know, definitely in the comments, let us know what should Shakur be doing, who should be sending out the contract. Are you guys aware of the contract being sent out? Did Shakur receive the contract? Like I said, this is just at this point where we where we are with it. As information comes, you know, we'll 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 adjust accordingly with the information. Now. But at this point, I don't see anything moving. I don't see nothing moving but the rent. You know what I mean? So you let me know. It's your boy Rain. It's your boy uh Ray Davis. This is the ATP Combat Media Show. Shout out to all my subscribers. If this is the first time tapping into content, as I've said many, many times, go ahead and subscribe. Hit your bell notification so you're getting all the notifications when we drop in this content. And at this point, we out. We out.